Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries in regards to some of the most extreme stars in the Milky Way galaxy. The stars referred to as hypervelocity stars, and the fastest moving stars discovered in the Milky Way so far. Stars whose velocities are so high that they're actually going to be escaping the Milky Way as they're traveling across the galaxy. And this recent paper that you can find in the description below even discovered a new record holder, basically a star that's moving across the night skies at nearly 3000 km per second. And so let's talk a little bit more about this concept, talk about these new discoveries, but also discuss the unusual origin of some of these stars discussed in this recent paper. But first I guess let's discuss the overall concept of the star velocities across the galaxy and how some stars acquire high velocities. So on average, most stars moving across the galaxy usually have a velocity of under 300 km per second. For example, the solar system and obviously planet Earth move around the galaxy at just over 230 km per second, which is a typical speed for a typical star located in the galactic disk. Obviously, in some locations, like globular clusters, the velocity is going to be a little bit different, because here objects orbit in a much more compact way. And in some cases, based on various supernova and various molecular clouds, you also get what's known as runaway stars, which are basically stars that are located near some kind of a supernova and basically get kicked out from the system as the supernova occurs. This is kind of common around various nebula, and the iconic Barnard's Loop located in the Orion Belt is actually believed to be one of these ancient supernova that might have produced a few runaway stars. Here is another example from the Orion Nebula of what's known as the Bow Shock, produced by a fast-moving star as it travels through the nebular cloud. But on the extreme side of the spectrum, we also have stars that move really, really fast. These are known as hypervelocity stars, with velocities exceeding the orbital velocity in a typical galaxy. And that means that these stars will usually have velocities over 1000 km per second. Although just to escape the Milky Way galaxy, you only have to travel at approximately 550 km per second. But in this case, these stars will often travel at least at double the speed. And so because of this, it's of course assumed that these stars are going to escape the galaxy, or it's actually even been previously assumed that some of them might be coming from other galaxies out there. In other words, these are basically just visitors from other galaxies where these stars acquired very high velocities. Now the first such star, whose name you see right here, and that's often referred to as the outcast star, was originally discovered back in 2005. But as soon as the scientists realized these stars exist, pretty quickly they started to find more as new techniques became available and as telescopes improved as well. Now previously, just to measure the velocity of the star, the scientists would basically have to look at the star and its motion across the night skies for several years. Here's an example of the nearby Barnard star. And here the observations lasted for just over 20 years. Obviously doing this for every star out there would be kind of impractical. But with advances in technology and new telescopes, the stellar kinematics, or advanced measurements of star motion, actually became relatively simple. And today we have a telescope that's extremely good at that, able to do so automatically pretty much 24-7, and has been doing so for many years. The iconic ESA's Gaia telescope. And in the past it's already discovered a lot of incredible things that would be otherwise invisible to us or would take forever to find. But by analyzing the data from just the last few years, the scientists were able to find various anomalies where the stars were just moving a little bit too fast, naturally suggesting that they were hypervelocity stars. And so, for example, just two years ago, the scientists behind this paper have already identified nearly 600 high-velocity stars, with 43 confirmed to be hypervelocity stars, with the total number of these stars discovered going from like 20 to now almost 100. But even at these numbers, these are still relatively rare objects considering the fact that there are billions and billions of stars in the entire galaxy. But the obvious question that the scientists always had about these unusual stars is, what exactly makes them move so fast? Is it always the supernova, or is it something entirely different? Now, one of the first such stars discovered, US-708, is believed to have been one of the first stars confirmed to be a result of a very unusual supernova that we're going to discuss in a few seconds. But over time, the scientists realized that this seems to be kind of rare, the majority of these stars actually very likely are produced by entirely different means. And it's now believed that most of them very likely come from various binary systems that had some kind of an encounter with a supermassive black hole, possibly in the center of the galaxy, where one of the stars basically gets swallowed, the other one escapes. 
And because this is something we expect to happen in a lot of galaxies out there, it's not surprising that many of these different stars travel across the entire universe very often passing through galaxies like the Milky Way, but many more traveling in the intergalactic space. We also have some examples of various neutron stars, like the one that you see right here, this is an actual image of one, that tell us of a different mechanism involving various supernova. At least one of these neutron stars has actually been discovered to travel at approximately 1500 km per second. It's the object right here, sometimes referred to as the cosmic cannonball. But these are also believed to be somewhat rare and require extremely specific conditions. And because these are neutron stars, they contain more mass and thus require a lot more energy to propel them to very high velocities. But smaller stars technically can actually travel much faster. And so the scientists wanted to figure out if there are maybe, for example, white dwarfs or even smaller stars that could be traveling even faster. And so in the most recent paper, with a simple title, The Fastest Stars in a Galaxy, one of the main ideas was to actually discover these super fast stars that were probably created as a result of a very specific supernova. A type 1a supernova, which usually happens when a white dwarf explodes, but involving a partner that was orbiting very close to this white dwarf. And the way that this mechanism very likely works is very similar to how a typical nova works. We have a white dwarf and some kind of a different star that serves as a donor for the white dwarf collecting all the mass. Although in this case the scientists believe that it's probably two white dwarfs, with one of the white dwarfs being the donor. At some point that more massive white dwarf collects just enough mass to reach the Chandrasekhar limit of approximately 1.4 solar masses, at which point, according to modern physics, the white dwarf collapses and explodes. But in this case, this explosion seems to be very unique. The scientists refer to this as D6 supernova, dynamically driven, double degenerate, double detonation. And the reason it's different is because it's not actually collecting hydrogen from a larger star, instead it seems to collect helium, depositing the helium on the surface. And at some point that helium layer becomes so thick and so dense that it reaches conditions where helium fuses into carbon, but does so very violently. Now, in a normal white dwarf binary system, this is when we get phenomena known as nova. These generally happen all the time and we see them from everywhere, and these are actually very well understood. But in some rare cases, when the helium layer is just thick enough, it can trigger a secondary detonation of the core of the white dwarf itself, basically completely eliminating the star and creating this massive explosion right next to the other white dwarf. And that kick is enough to suddenly give this much smaller white dwarf a huge amount of velocity, producing some of the fastest moving stars across the galaxy. But this is a really rare event, and so what the scientists were trying to figure out was essentially how rare. Can we actually find more of these by searching through Gaia survey, or have we basically found most of them? And then what turns out that they found six more runaway stars, with two stars breaking new records in terms of velocity. And so even though the previous record holder had the velocity of 2200 km per second, the new star, J0927, is moving at a velocity of 2753 km per second, with the second record holder having a velocity of 2670 km per second, or roughly around 500 km per second more than the previous record holder. But I guess interestingly enough, there is really only about 15 of these stars known across the entire galaxy created by this unusual supernova event. All other stars are very likely produced by the interaction with massive black holes. But these supernova do create the fastest moving stars, so this is actually a pretty interesting discovery. Nevertheless, here the scientists are pretty convinced that this is just the beginning and there are very likely a lot of dimmer stars that are still missing and are still hiding, especially stars with even less mass and thus less luminosity. Also, statistically, the scientists believe that our galaxy itself has already launched at least 10 million of these stars in the last 12 billion years. And if the same number came from other galaxies, we kind of expect a lot of them to pass through the Milky Way even right now. And because of the statistical analysis, the scientists strongly believe that there are quite a few of these stars even very close to us within solar neighborhood. But because of their dimness, they're just very difficult to find. But obviously discovering them would be really exciting, because these would be visitors from very distant galaxies, providing opportunities to study molecular composition of galaxies really far away. And so it's quite likely that these are just the first discoveries coming from the Gaia catalog, and we're probably going to find more in the next few years. But before we finish the video, I also wanted to quickly clarify that these are not the 
ultimate fastest stars in the galaxy. Because obviously, the fastest fastest stars are right next to the central black hole. Some of these stars move at velocities close to 20,000 km per second, but they only have these velocities when they're basically extremely close to the black hole itself. You can learn more about these stars in one of the videos in the description. But when it comes to the overall fastest stars just moving across the galaxy, the stars in this paper are currently the fastest we have. And so following this discovery, it's quite likely that the new discovery is going to be in regards to fainter objects that were either previously missed by surveys or were actually just invisible to us until relatively recently because of the advances in telescope technology. And so at some point, I'm sure in the next few years, we're going to have a discovery of a star that's moving over 3000 km per second or maybe even faster. And so until these future discoveries, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, check out previous videos on similar topics in the description below, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.